Well, a few months ago, I had the great pleasure of talking to Bob Grimstead about his immense experience on the British air show circuit. And we talked about all manner of things, from display authorizations to designing a sequence and how all of this has changed over the years. This time, I'm sitting with Paul Freeland, who's the owner of this gorgeous F260 Marchetti. Uh, Paul joined the airshow circuit in 2019, um, and this time we're going to talk about many of the same topics, but hearing from Paul's uh, rather different perspective, being one of the more recent additions to the British airshow circuit. Um, and I want to start by asking about sort of the general attitude in the industry. Um, I hear a lot of complaints nowadays from pilots saying they're drowning in paperwork, there's a huge amount of uh, added bureaucracy, and that for them it's sucking the fun out of uh, displaying at air shows. Um, the number of air shows in this country is declining. It seems like a funny time to want to join the circuit, so, so what made you want to become a display pilot? <laughs> Interesting question. Yes, what made me want to join was the fun is still there very much. Um, it's a lovely environment. The, the people you get to meet are all very interesting people and the ability just to be part of air shows, part of the entertainment industry in that respect, but doing what you love, to some extent being a, a hooligan quite safely and respectfully uh, with some low level passes in front of a crowd. Yeah, it's a great feeling and um, uh, Dodge Bailey who was the, the chief pilot at the Shuttleworth collection for, for many years um, and a very experienced pilot in, in the, throughout but also a very experienced DAE. Um, he agreed to do some mentoring with me and work up to signing me off for my first display authorisation and uh, that in itself was uh, a huge privilege and uh, I got an awful lot from that session. Um, you could say that even that mentoring in itself was well worth the whole process of, of applying for, for display authorisation. So Dodge was effectively your mentor as well as your DAE? Yes, the CAA very much encouraged this mentorship relationship between the DAEs and the applicant DAs. Um, I think it's actually very important. Uh, the DAE has a lot of responsibility for assessing each applicant right from the start in terms of their um, mental attitude, why you're coming into this, what you want to achieve from it, and your skills and your competence on the other hand, and to assess right from the start whether actually you're a suitable person to, to go forward. It's, the process starts with an interview and uh, on the basis of that interview you either get granted um, provisional DA uh, authority or not. And when you are eventually evaluated and hopefully granted a full display authorisation, um, this is something we talked a lot to Bob about and if anyone hasn't seen it I'll put the link in the description. Um, but one thing that Bob did say is the DAE doesn't have to approve the exact sequence that you're going to fly. There is scope to change things up for any number of uh, very valid reasons. So what approach do you take to your DA uh, evaluation? Do you try and present the fullest, most complete routine possible? Um, or do you try and do the minimum required to get that DA in the bag? and then decide what to do with it afterwards. Yeah, as I said, the, the process is one of mentoring, so you will build up to a routine that lasts a sensible amount of time, and that will be something that you practice, you'll be picked up on points, honed, corrected, criticised, until you can perform that routine well and competently. The actual uh, DAE sign-off process requires you to fly, in essence, that routine, um, but then also to demonstrate some flexibility. Um, I think that's a key part of it. It's not about sticking rigidly to a routine. Uh, for a number of reasons, you might need to adapt it. So as part of that, uh, that process, you'll need to fly your routine and then adapt it in some way for example, if an area becomes a no-go area, 
maybe an accident on a road or um, uh, pedestrian access to an area they shouldn't have access to. Can you handle that? Can you adapt your routine to operate in a, a safer area or go off and hold and start again to demonstrate that you're, you're able to cope with unexpected uh, occurrences during that routine? Uh, similarly, um, you'll have practiced an awful lot at one venue and you'll know the layout there very well but as soon as you have your authorization uh, you'll want to go out and display at uh, a number of different venues all with different uh, landscapes and terrains uh, some have uh, avoid areas within the, uh, the display area and you will need to adapt your routine not only to make sure it's safe in each area but also to present the plane in the best way to, uh, to the audience depending on where they are and even some of the fine points uh, where the sun is on that day so that uh, you can perhaps present the, the wings of the aircraft to the photographers with the sun on them if you get that opportunity. And given this whole training process is uh, rather collaborative with your evaluator by the sound of it, um, presumably you're not going to decide to press ahead with the actual evaluation until you're both quite confident that you can do everything that's required of you and that at the end of the evaluation you'll be awarded a DA. So when you took your first evaluation, did you think there was a significant chance of failure or were you pretty confident? As you say, um, it's something that you build up to over a period of time. Uh, the first few practices uh, I did with, with Dodge in the cockpit with me, guiding and mentoring. We then went on to a, a couple where he was on the ground observing. Um, if I remember correctly, uh, I don't think my actual evaluation routine was one that I knew was going to be the evaluation routine. Dodge was on the ground watching and he gave me some instructions as to what to do for the first routine and then what he was going to introduce that required it to be adapted. Uh, I flew those and landed and we had the debrief and at which point Dodge said, actually, yep, you've, you've met the standards, I'm happy to sign you off now, which was um, a, a very pleasant surprise, I think, to have on that occasion. And how important was his feedback, not just in preparing the display itself and the physical manoeuvres that you were going to fly, but also in shaping your um, approach to your first season? It was immensely uh, beneficial to me. Um, Dodge has years and years of experience as a pilot in general, as a, as a test pilot, as an RAF instructor um, and you know, more recently as a display pilot. The, the mentoring is far more than just how to fly the plane with a degree of skill. It was about presenting it to the, the crowd in, in a way that gives them what they want, what the display organisers want, and how to make the most of the show. This is about a show, and you're a participant in that. Um, so, I uh, say little cues as to when you're flying at one particular point. I remember Dodge pointing out, look out at the wings, Paul. If you see the sun on the wings, that's when the photographers are going to get their best shot. Hold this angle just a little bit longer, give them the best opportunity before you then move into another position. Um, within the air show uh, industry, there's, there's the very common reminder, we all remind each other, it's show the aircraft and not yourself. It's about presenting it in interesting angles, both for spectators to see, but for photographers to get their pictures from as well. That's a very significant part of what people get from air shows. So you got your DA in 2018. 2019 was your first season. Um, but you approached that season as a new display pilot with no track record um, of performing successful and engaging displays to the public. So how do you go about securing those crucial first few bookings? Um, yes, that's a very good point. Uh, you find yourself with a piece of paper in your hand saying, great, I can go and show at air shows. Um, getting the bookings, you have to go and approach 
the organisers for each show uh, present what you've got and what you want to fly. Um, I was very fortunate in that the aircraft I fly is, um, is quite rare. It's a beautiful, agile plane. Uh, this one's very photogenic, especially against a blue sky, and it makes for a lovely display item. And I've had a lot of interest uh, just in terms of bringing the aircraft along. The CAA have helped a lot there as well. They introduced uh, the Tyro DA scheme whereby um, for the first eight shows or two years of displaying, um, you can be an item on a display schedule with no additional fee to the CAA. And that's certainly been very attractive to a lot of the event organisers. And I had a lot of interest in my first year as to, oh, are you Tyro? Great, yep, we'll have you. And that really worked well because having displayed for a season, um, now my Tyro DA has expired, but I, I've still got a lot of interest. People remember the shows that I did and uh, what they liked about them. And that's given me that, um, that provenance, I guess, that you were talking about. And where do you think things are going to go next? Is there more scope for improvement with the routine or perhaps you want to display at more events? Where do you see yourself in a couple of seasons from now? Yes, absolutely. Um, I love what I do. The routine I do is about six minutes, seven minutes, depending on the, um, the location and how it's played out. But um, at the moment, I don't have an aerobatic authorization, so I keep my manoeuvres to to those that are, are not defined as aerobatic manoeuvres in the air navigation order. Uh, the aircraft is a very agile and capable aircraft for some lovely um, sweeping aerobatic manoeuvres and in particular I'd like to introduce uh, a half Cuban manoeuvre and a climbing roll. Um, and those are things that I think would, would fit very well and enhance the, the routine that I display. I think no aircraft, no matter what it is, should display for too long. With all my enthusiasm, I've seen some, some acts that just go on a bit too long. You think, I'm ready for the next one now. So it's about keeping something short, interesting, relevant for the show, and uh, condensing that into something that's very well rehearsed, well practiced, and you're able to deliver it competently. When you look back on your journey as a whole, um, you perhaps started out not from the same background as many people on the circuit, a lot of whom come from the military or perhaps from a competition aerobatics background. Um, you were a private pilot. How steep was the learning curve between taking an aeroplane like this, flying it somewhere for lunch and then coming home again, uh, versus displaying at low level for the public? Yes, there was definitely a learning curve involved. Um, it was something that took me probably about six sessions to get to the point where I felt confident with some fast passes flown with precision to a display line uh, at uh, down to 100 feet above the ground. Um, that was definitely a new experience, uh, but something that was very thrilling to do. The level of skill needed to get there depends a lot on the aircraft. Um, I think this plane in particular is one that handles very well and, and very competently and it's, it, it's quite easy to, to build up enough confidence in what you do with this one to know that um, you can fly that low pass with precision, you can bring it up into a wing over and the, the speed falls drastically uh, to the point at the top where you're turning over, controlling it safely against the store margin that you've got and bringing it down again online to commence your next pass. That takes practice, um, but it is just a matter of practice. I think once you've got the appreciation of the physics involved in, in flying and the danger points and you can concentrate on those, you can quite quickly build up to uh, the position where you can position the plane very well during each manoeuvre to bring you on into the next manoeuvre very competently and safely. And do you think most private pilots um, with access to the right mentorship and assistance along the way would be uh, capable of doing what you've done and becoming airshow pilots? 
I guess so, uh, to some extent. You can never generalise about such things. It's all about each individual's competency level and mental attitude. But these are things that if you're sensible and you stick strictly to the principle that you only fly manoeuvres that you're happy with in a way that you're happy to fly them, having practised them regularly, then yes, I don't see that there's anything that's beyond the skills of most pilots in general to achieve. I think there's an awful lot of people who wouldn't want to do it, um, and I think there's a lot of people who may find it a little bit too daunting, um, but with practice and with the right attitude, I don't see really why most PPL people couldn't take that option. And finally, if there's anybody watching who is a private pilot, perhaps has access to an interesting aeroplane um, and wants to get onto the airshow circuit or is interested in getting onto the airshow mm. circuit, uh, if you were to distill all of your experience mm -hmm. down to just a, a couple of sentences, what would your advice be to them? I think if you're not already going to air shows, get to air shows, see the display acts, look at them from the perspective of a pilot, get to know a lot of the pilots, get to know some DAEs and talk to them. The DAE process is very well laid out in uh, CAP 1724, so download a copy of that and then if you feel ready and you're wanting to do this, get in touch with the CAA. Um, the process begins with you contacting a DAE and an initial interview uh, on their part to assess your background, your current skill level and quite importantly your motives. But if that's successful then the CAA will award a provisional DA to you and you can start the mentoring process with the DAE. And, and work your way up to the routine that suits you and your aircraft. Well, as is probably audible on the soundtrack, it is a horrible <laughs> day today. The rain is coming down on the hangar roof. We'd hoped to maybe do some flying, head over to Duxford um, for you, you to do a display practice. That's not going to happen, but fingers crossed tomorrow at the Duxford Flying Day, We'll get some lovely footage of you flying your display to mix in uh, among this interview. Thank you very much for your time. It's been fascinating. Thank you, Adam.